Welcome everyone to It Tasted for Gaming Appetizers, and tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about reviewing games. Why it sucks. No. <laughs> what sucks about reviewing video games, in my opinion, and we'll get to, we'll let Nick chime in too here and see what his opinions are, is that video games are very personal. You know, um, so it's kind of hard to just take a generic review unless you're looking at it for a technical review of a game. It's hard to just take somebody's word for a game, right? We all have different tastes and likes and dislikes in a game and and different personalities all around. You know, so it's really hard to watch a game reviewer, in my opinion, unless you're looking for a technical review like this game's busted. Wait. Till next patch comes out, we'll review it again to see if the patches fix things or, you know, this is horrible gameplay or not as advertised or something like that. It's really hard to just take a review of a game as face value unless you find somebody in the review world who has similar tastes to you. And that's kind of why we started out with the three and four person format to kind of pull in people who aren't necessarily the same play style as we are and we all very vastly different you know uh nick is big into the retro games and he likes a lot more platformers and stuff like that than i do and even more so than shane does and you know shane's kind of a general all-around game replaces a little bit of everything um and then i'm and i'm really heavy on graphics graphics mean a lot to me more than most or than some things i can't play retro because it's just to me i'm like okay i played that I'm ready to get into the modern age with gaming. <laughs> so, you know, and that's why when that's why we do a three person review at minimum, typically sometimes we'll do two. Um, but we try to stick to a little, at least three and, you know, we used to have a fourth, but he's kind of a general gamer too. So, you know, he's a, I call, I call him like a fair weather gamer. He plays like the triple a titles when they come out for a little while. Um, but he's one of those long haul gamers too, that just plays the same game forever, which you know, you really can't do that if you're trying to review games. Um, so it really does. It's really reviewing games kind of sucks because you either have to have a stick, you know, like we're talking like Angry Joe, you know, got a stick in gaming or or the games, the guy who does the games really, really quick, the British guy or whatever. I can't remember his his thing, but, you know, or somebody like that. But for the most part, if you're trying to figure out whether you should buy a game based on somebody's review, that's kind of a difficult thing to do because you have to you have to be that person, right? You're never going to agree with anybody wholeheartedly because I don't like there's game reviewers that I like to watch, but I often will disagree with their interpretation of a game more often than I agree with their interpretation. Like I played some games that the people that I thought were, you know, pretty close to the way that what I liked in games just trashed a game and I got the game and I'm like, this game's fucking amazing. Why did I wait so long? You know? So, you know, reviewing games is a difficult thing because you're reviewing something that somebody is probably going to like or hate that you may have liked or hate. You may have liked it, and the person who kind of is in the same vein as you is the opposite. So reviewing games sucks in that matter because it's hard to just take somebody's word for it. And I typically don't. Even though I'll watch some reviewers, I don't take their word for it. <laughs> I look at... I typically... I hate to say this, but I typically look at like some first impressions of the game and not like gameplay, but like screenshots of the game. Um, only time I look at gameplay is if I'm on the fence about it, like really on the fence about it. Um, but I typically will play most AAA entry points into the gaming uh, arena unless it's something I know I don't like. Like I'm not a big modern warfare Call of Duty guy. I typically don't buy that stuff day one. I'll buy it when it goes on sale to play with my friends, but I'm not a I'm not that. And I don't buy into the sports games. I'm not a sports game fan. So I know that I'm not going to get into FIFA. I'm not going to get into Madden. I'm not going to get into any of these EA sports games. About the only thing that I buy of any kind of frequency in those is some golf games to play with Nick and Shane. We'll play some golf games together. So, you know, I know what kind of games I like, but I have been burnt on this style of what I do because, you know, I bought games that a reviewer said was horrible. And I'm like, how bad can it be? I really want to play this. And you buy it. And you're like, man, this is. I wasted $70, you know? So, but Nick, what do you think, man? What do you think about reviewers and reviewing games and, you know, you reviewing games for others as well? Yeah, it's, it is a difficult thing and it, it's all opinion, right? Um, you know, when you go out and listen to someone, especially like in us in our case, and we review games 
and you listen to us talk about a certain game, that doesn't mean that you're going to like the game as well, right? Um, the try, I think the thing that we try to do with the three-person panel is really just kind of introduce three different types of gamers, right? Like Pat was saying, we, we all kind of have our games that we like and certain ones that we more gravitate to. And so we, we try to pick um, some of the, the bigger titles that we know are going to be popular and, and, and most of those we want to play ourselves, um, but we may not like them all, right? Um, and so we try to give our opinion and sometimes we differ. We, di we differ a lot. There's sometimes where we'll come in and one or two of us really like it and the other one doesn't, right? And they give their reasons why they don't like it. And, and as you as a listener or anybody as a listener, I, I feel like that can help in some cases because maybe you gravitate more towards one person or the other as far as the types of games that they like. Um, but everyone has their own personal preference. Um, and, and reviews are just that. They're just a personal preference, right? Um, those you know, compared to like um, those freelance reviewers like us, we're just freelancing it, you know, we're just doing it on our own um, compared to a company like IGN or something like that. Those big, you know, they put more, they're the more technical reviewers, right? They're looking at every aspect of it. And we don't really look at every aspect of it in that sense. You know, we'll give you some technical, like the game's performance and various things like that, but we don't get into the nitty gritty. It's trying to, I mean, the best thing for any reviewer out there is like, try to just talk about a game, you know, don't have those rose colored glasses with a game, right? I mean, you might be a game that you really enjoy uh, or that you really like, but don't spin it to where it's the best thing since sliced bread, right? <laughs> it's like, really give your all out like, hey, you know, it's just not good, right? Um, but again, it's not good to me right? Or it's not good to the reviewer. If you're watching someone out there, it's best to do your due diligence, right? Even if you watch a reviewer or you watch us review something, it's best to look out uh, at other reviewers, see what other people say, or maybe go on to other websites, maybe look at other things, especially if you're on the fence about something. If you know you're going to purchase a game, you don't really need to watch a review, right? But if you're really thinking about, hmm, do I want to pick this up and you want to watch a review about it, you know, maybe look at a couple of reviewers or something like that to really get the idea of um, how or, you know, what, what you feel about it. But it is difficult to review games because. Well, I mean, there's other factors besides the person watching and, and, and watching us review it um, for us. We are, you know, we don't get codes from publishers or anything like that. We're not big enough on the internets for that. Um, so we had to purchase all these games ourselves. So all the games that we review, these newer games that are coming out day one, everything, we've gone out and purchased them ourselves. And then we play them and get through them as quick as, as get through as much and sometimes beating them or getting through as much as we possibly can before we hit our own review window, right? Because we want to try to get, because the gaming, uh, games are coming out so quickly that you don't have time to you know for us we don't have time to do like the theatrics that uh, angry joe does right a game might come out the thing about angry joe is angry joe has the, the whole stick and the whole theatrics and various things like that going on because he has the money and the production to put behind it that a game like call of duty he could do a review for that like a month later and it's still going to get a crap ton of, of uh, watch hours uh, with it. You know, eventually for us, we could become that big potentially and, and do something similar. But for right now, we try to get things out there a little bit more quicker so that when people because gamers like to play the game that's coming out at that moment. So we try to get as close as we can to the release of it. So that way gamers can make their decision or help them make their decision on whether or not they want something. Um, and we also try to, besides the mainline series, we also try to pick uh, sometimes some obscure games, right? Games that you really wouldn't typically think about and we review those. Because uh, um, I, I think we also feel like um, we want to open ourselves 
as well as gamers up to experiences they may not have looked at, right? Um, how often do you see reviews for games that no one knows about, right? <laughs> or very little people. You, you'll see them for the big titles, but for the smaller titles, you may not. And so we try to hit those too. Um, but it is difficult. You know, it's difficult also because it takes away from us being able to play the games we personally want to play, right? Besides the ones we want to review, we do have other games that we all like individually that we're not all playing at the same time, like the Dead Space remake that we just we just played or, or you know, whatever else we're playing um, that we reviewed in the past. We have other games that we've probably have purchased that weren't worth a review that are sitting on our shelf and going, I can get this root game in for review and maybe pop this other one in for a couple hours here and there just to kind of get it, play some of that. Cause that's what I really want to play. So it's kind of like it, that. That's one part of it that sucks is you have to put the games you really want to play. Now, some of these games we review are games we really want to play. And sometimes not so much. There might be something else. We, when there might be a case where this other game is something we want to play more than this. And so we have to kind of put it on the back burner as we go through this because we're going to review it and and give our opinions on this game. So, yeah, it's it's a hard it's a hard thing to do. You know, um, it's a hard road to go down, especially if you're going to review games and depending on the uh, not just ne- necessarily reviewing games, but how often you're going to review them. Right. And we review one every week. So. That makes it. Makes it difficult to to play anything else besides the game you're reviewing. (laughs) Yeah, I would say that's probably one of the more difficult tasks, right? You got to play this game enough to give an honest review of it. You can't put 10 minutes into it and give a review. You have to actually put time and effort into reviewing it in the time. And sometimes that means we're getting a game on Friday and we're busting it out all weekend to get a get a review done, you know, so that really does suck. And, you know, it's because we don't get review copies. So if a game comes out on Friday and we want to have a review posted on Monday, you know, record a review in the week or whatever, we don't get that much play time. And sometimes it's two days, sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's less, you know, so it's, uh, you know, that's the hardest part. And then, you are you know, because all of us have full time jobs. This is not what we do for 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 work or anything. It's just that's our hobby. It's a, it's a hobby for us. So, you know we're not getting we're not getting paid to do reviews so you know there are our own opinions you know i've i've meant, read many articles and it's hard to tell whether some of these giant conglomerate of game reviewers i'm, not, I'm talking like IGN i'm not talking like angry joe or anything like that i'm talking like IGN and wired and some of these other ones that are professional journalists to be by to be unbiased i i think if you're getting paid as a company, how hard is it to say, I'm going to give your game an honest two because you deserve it. It's a, it's a crappy game, you know? Um, And, you know, and not fear repercussion from that developer or publisher to say, well, you know, you're out of our review publication. Now we're not going to give you review copies of our game. I mean, cause that's a very real thing, you know? And as a, as somebody like IGN that, you know, if they're going to lose their, freebies or whatever because of this then they probably have a real worry i don't see ign giving threes and twos and fours away that often you know so they give a lot of fives and sixes so which i take to mean ign's one and twos or fives and sixes so they don't upset the publishers and developers out there so um you know so i you know we're reviewing stuff based on like i said our own opinions so it's you got to take them or leave them, right? You know, you take them with a grain of salt, do your own research. You know, I I already typically know before I start watching anything on a game, if it's going to be a buy game or if I'm on the fence or I'm not even interested, you know, and we're always open to even getting game, getting hit up by indie developers to ask if we'll review their games. It's happened before. And we're open to that. We're open to reviewing some of that stuff that, as Nick has said, but remember, it's also when we do that, it's replacing something else in our lineup. Typically, uh, we have occasionally done two reviews in one week. That's really rough for us because, like I said, we all work. We all work full time jobs. We have we all have kids. We all have families. And, you know, so we are having to dedicate time to doing our hobby and then taking away from time for playing the games that we want to be playing right now. You know, <laughs> so that's why it kind of sucks. And and what I mean by sucks is that it's uh, it's hard to find somebody that you trust to review games. That's why we do the three panel review system. 
at least three, you know, two to three. We typically don't, I don't think we've ever done a single person game review. Um, at least because it doesn't, it just, it's not a good format. Um, you may not like the person who's doing this review of that game. You're like, well, I wanted the other guy's opinion because I like his opinion better, you know, or I, I trust his opinion more or whatever, or where's the funny old guy? His, his opinions are more funny than your guys, you know, or whatever, you know? So, uh, you know, that, and that's what we mean by reviewing socks is because I, like I said, I watch, I watch angry Joe. I watch quite a few different ones, but I definitely don't take what IGN says to heart on a video game review because I, don't know whether they're getting paid for that review or not. Um, you know, and to some extent, Angry Joe is getting free copies of games, you know. And I, I mean, his stuff seems to be spot on mostly with what I would think of a game too, but he also has games that he likes that I'm like, that game's garbage or that game's trash or I don't like it. Or, you know, maybe it's not garbage trash. Maybe it's just, I don't like that type of game. So, you know, and he's into that. So I typically, like I said, I try not to set a preconceived notion of a game sometimes, but sometimes my uh, opinion of the franchise gets ahead of me and I will be the first to admit that. I mean, that that's happened, you know? I mean, I loved Andromeda. Most people hated it, but I, I love the Mass Effect universe. So that's why, what kept me going, even though that game was a technical train wreck of technical issues, but it was, in my opinion, it was a good game. But, um, but I'm also not one to say that my game is better than something else when like Game of the Year comes out. I mean, I love Horizon, but I'll be the first to admit that a game that's not in my genre was way better than it. Even and I played that game. So Elden Ring was better than, than, uh, than horizon. And that hurts to say, <laughs> but you know, but I'm also thinking like uh, in the future, like star Wars, uh, the Jedi survivor one, I'm all giddy for that. I've watched nothing on it, but just star Wars. So, <laughs> and Starfield's kind of the same thing. I like Bioware and I like the stuff they put out. So I'm kind of giddy for Starfield even though I've watched nothing on it because I don't want to have a, I don't want to have a preconceived notion except for my giddiness over who's putting it out and it's space. I love space games. I love star. I love stuff and like space type games. And I, I love Bioware games. You probably already can tell of mass effect and all that stuff, you know? So, um, but you know, so you got to find people who are like the same genre and stuff as you do. You know, I mean, I grew up on that type of stuff. You know, I'm a big RPG storyteller, you know, dragon age, Mass Effect, Horizon, all that kind of stuff. And I'll I'll play games outside of my genre, but I'm also don't like horror games. You know, I played the Dead Space remake with these guys. And while I admit it was a good game, it's hard for me to play something like that. Um, so it's not really I would not have bought Dead Space if it was if I wasn't reviewing it. So I would have known I know off the bat when that game was coming out, it's not going to be in my purchase. Um, it's just not my type of game. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sit there and be high anxiety for hours on end playing this game and get done and feel like I just ran a marathon and need a cigarette when I sit down or something, you know? So, but you know, that's my gaming style and, and, you know, Nick's got his. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I also want to mention Starfield is not a Bioware game, but. Just oh, yeah, I just mean in the same storytelling <laughs> right. genre, you know, right. in, yeah. in that just, genre. Because I, I see somebody I at, saying it already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just just to no, I just mean in like the storytelling right. RPG genre. Because right. in my opinion, if you know, it it seems like it's going to be very much like that type of universe to me. You know, yeah, yeah. Starfield looks really cool. Um, I'm 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 excited for that. And Jedi Survivor, I'm excited for that one too. You know, I mean, I love the first one. Um, and I liked Andromeda. I, it was a technical train wreck, but I played it. I beat it. I enjoyed it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it all comes down to opinion, right? I mean, no matter who you watch or, or or who you listen to, for us, it's it's we're trying to give you three perspectives on a review for a game. Sometimes we're all like, yeah, it's a great game. Sometimes you know, it's it's mixed mixed up, or sometimes we're all like, no, you know. <laughs> but you know, we all play it, uh, you know. Uh, on our own and we try to provide as far as we do we just try to provide you with the best um opinion of our opinion of the game right that doesn't mean you're not going to like it you know or that you're going to like it or whatever um we could say a game sucks to us but you might find it your one of your most favorite games and that's okay you know we just try you know i think a lot of reviewers out there especially legitimate ones um are just trying to give the audience um, their take, their opinion, and the best 
opinion they can. It's ultimately up to the gamer on whether or not they want to purchase said title and whether or not they're going to have fun with it. I feel like a review gives you a good kind of uh, foundation as to what to expect. And if you like what you hear, even if the person says they hate it, if you like what you hear, then that might be up your alley, right? And with us, you know, we're different types of gamers. We like different types of games. We play different types of games uh, on our own, right? Not just the ones we review, but on our own. Um, so that helps you. I feel like that helps you too, depending on what type of gamer you are uh, uh, when you watch us. Um, you may like things that Patrick plays, right? You're very similar in his kind of genre. So what he says about a certain game, you might be like, yep, I'm probably going to like that too, right? Or uh, me or Shane or, you know, whatever. Um, so, you know, that's one way to tackle it. But yeah, I mean, it does, it does, it's it's a hard thing to think about when you think about reviews. And, but it, again, it all comes down to personal preference, you know, make your own decisions on whether or not. Reviews can just help you make that decision based on what the reviewer says, but don't take it to heart. I, I never do, right? Because there have been some games that IGN has scored low that I've seen before, and they were some of my favorite games ever. Like, they were just so awesome. I don't know why they scored so low. And I've seen IGN score some games really high and play them, and I was like, this game is horrible. This game sucks. Why was it rated high? Because this game is not even close to being a high rating. I don't understand where IGN was coming from on that one, right? Or the other, or other people out there, you know? Um, there's been many games like that. Sometimes they're spot on, right? Sometimes I'll play a game and um, IGN and other websites and things like that are spot on with their with the score that they give. And I think that's also why we don't give a score to, we talked about this a long time ago, but you know, we don't give a score to a game because we're just trying to give you our opinions on it and not really rate it in any way. We're not, I mean, we're going to tell you if it's, if it's, if it's good or bad, but ultimately it's up to you, but we're not going to give it a rating and say it's a whatever out of whatever, because it might be a nine out of 10 for us, but it could be a six out of 10 for you. Right. Uh, so we're just going to tell you the good, the bad, what we thought of it, if we liked it or not, uh, whether we think it's worth your time picking up and playing. And, you know, you just kind of take that information and do what you will with it. All right. Yep, exactly. Games are very personal. So personal, you know, personal preference. So that's all it is, you know. And if uh, Grandpa Shane was here, he'd tell you his personal preferences and stuff. But, you know, he decided to take the night off. Grandpa needs his nap, so <laughs> we need angry grandpa reviews so we can have our stick. That'll be Shane's thing. Angry grandpa's angry grandpa's reviews. Nick's quicks, and I have no clue what I would do. <laughs> so awesome. Well, be, you got anything uh, else? You it'd be space reviews with Patrick. Space reviews. <laughs> <laughs> but then it would be because because I wouldn't be able to review Doom properly. Or out space, out Doom. of this world. <laughs> Review. Yeah, out of this world review. There you go. Because then I'd be like, oh, I'm not playing Dead Space. Sorry. Uh, I'll go to see Dick for that one. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you know, everybody, everybody out there is popular. No, not everybody, but most of the big top popular ones got a stick, you know, a stick that they knew and just trying to give you opinions, you know. And we've been doing this for a few years now. And, you know, we enjoy giving our opinions and whatever, you know. And just because you don't like what we put out there, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion, just like we are ours. So, <laughs> so, all right. Well, Nick, you got anything else on this topic about how how reviewing games is difficult? No, no, I think we covered it. All right. Well, let us know what you think down in the comments. You know, do you side with one of us? If you watch regularly, do you, do you tend to have similar game choices to some of us and not the others? Or maybe what is your genre? You know, some people stick within their own genre. They have a subset of games that they play maybe you're strictly an indie gamer or you're strictly a switch gamer or, or you know whatever you know whatever your preference is as long as you're playing a game that's really all that matters to us <laughs> so let us know what you think down in the comments and we hope you enjoyed this episode and hope to catch you in the next one <laughs>